What would motivate a Bill Gates or a Tim Cook or somebody that runs a massive company who's worth $100 billion or more? Why would a person like that uh, be so enamored with China and do these things? And I think it, you know, part of it is money, I guess. I, some, for some people, there's never enough of it. Uh, but the other part is they, they love the idea of the Chinese dictatorship. Peter Boyer, you mentioned uh, willing naivete on the part of a, of a lot of Americans about China. It made me recall a conversation I had with the former KGB bureau chief in Washington, D.C., a guy by the name of Ole Kalugin. I did an interview with him in the mid-1990s after he had defected to the United States. And I asked him specifically, what is it about Americans that you try to exploit? And his, his answer was simple and really profound. He said, one, Americans like money, and two, Americans are naive. Peter Schweitzer, why don't you pick that up? It's, it's, the, it's in many respects the subject of your book. Yeah, I mean, that, that is the currency uh, that they try to exploit most, which is the financial ambitions of politicians in Washington, D.C. And, you know, look, a lot of politicians in Washington, D.C. feel like they're underpaid, they're underappreciated. I certainly don't happen to think so, but that's their view. Right. And so it becomes very attractive uh, for them uh, to think in terms of ways that they can enhance their financial prospects. And when you're talking about a country like China, which has a political culture that is centered around the Communist Party, but also the family, uh, setting up the family with financial deals. It could be, you know, Joe Biden with his son, Hunter Biden. It could be a Republican senator with a spouse and with a family member. Uh, that is a method and approach. And what happens is it forms a bond and it gives uh, Beijing leverage over politicians. So financial motivation is a big part of it. And also naivete. We've had this notion for 35 or 40 years under both Republican and Democrat administrations that if we uh, trade with them, we give them access to technology, they're going to wear our blue jeans, they're going to listen to our music, and they're going to become more like us. Uh, and the reality is that the Chinese government has gone the opposite way. They're more aggressive, more repressive, and more of a threat than they've ever been. So it's money and naivete. Ola Kalugin, who I also met back in the day, was right about it when it came to the Soviet Union, and he's certainly right about it as it pertains to Beijing. We've all seen that video from Shanghai, this, this mega city, uh, where they have a new COVID lockdown, and they're using drones and robot dogs to warn the public to stay in their apartments. Uh, it's just, it's a dystopian thing. Looking at that robot do dog, it reminded me of that company in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, Boston Dynamics, which is producing all these incredible robots and I looked at that robot dog in Shanghai with a loudspeaker on its back. Thinking, well, that could very easily be equipped with a gun. But I also thought, I know where that robot dog came from. Probably Boston Dynamics or some similar company. It's corporate America, which is falling in love with China and the market potential that it, pro it poses as well. I love that dog video, too. I mean... It's just so weird, yeah. but it also is kind of scary. I mean, exactly. it tells you, my Lord, look, these people are, they, I mean, they have a purpose in mind. And your thought about the, you know, that could actually be a gun or worse. I mean, these folks know, uh, as do we kind of, but, you know, they're actually acting on it, which we're not. They know how important strategically is um, artificial intelligence is uh, to the future. They see, it's, they see themselves not as our competitors, they see themselves as our adversaries. Uh, they see themselves as the folks who need to uh, push the United States of America aside so that they can dominate. That is the plan. They say it over and over and over again. And President Xi has actually, uh, regarding the thing you just referenced, artificial intelligence, he is actually, what's the quote, Peter, about the uh, the commanding heights. Yeah, and, whoever seizes the commanding heights with artificial intelligence will win the technological war between the United States and China. To that point, in your book, you relate the story of President Xi's visit in 2015 to Microsoft's headquarters in Seattle. Present for the meeting, as you say, were the CEOs of Apple, Amazon, Airbnb, Facebook, and many others. Apple's CEO, Tim Cook, said of the meeting, and you, quote, you quoted him, did you feel the room shake? They're enamored of President Xi. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a great point, Doug, because people will ask me, well, okay, we can understand why a politician who doesn't have a lot of money might sell out. Obviously, it's a terrible thing, but it's understandable. They're greedy. They want access to money. What would motivate a Bill Gates or a Tim Cook or somebody that runs a massive company who's worth $100 billion or more? Why would a person like that uh, be so enamored with China and do these things? And I think it, you know, part of it is money, I guess. I, some, for some people, there's never enough of it. Uh, but the other part is they, they love the idea of the Chinese dictatorship. They, they won't come out and exactly say that. But what they will say is they admire the efficiency of the Chinese system. They admire how quickly things just get done in China. And of course, if you have a system of governance where there's no concern for civil rights, for property rights, there's no independent judiciary, it's very easy to be efficient. Uh, any dictatorship is going to be efficient. You so mean they don't have trade unions. No, no, they, <laughs> when they say we're going to have a bridge right. uh, erected in two days, or right. not, uh, yeah, there's yeah. there's no workers' rights. There's no, and that's really part of the problem. Is and they will say this: Elon Musk, Bill Gates, a lot of them have made very strong statements praising the Chinese regime as being more responsive to the needs yeah. of their people than our system is to ours. And of course, the reason is is a dictator can do whatever they want. Um, and that's really a troubling aspect of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's money, but it's also they're enamored with this dictatorial type of regime. In the old days of the Soviet Union and the, and the People's Republic of China, uh, we're familiar with how people who fell into political disfavor were simply airbrushed out of photographs. You saw pictures of Stalin or Lenin there Absolutely. with his colleagues who they had a, a war over something. And, and so they simply airbrushed him out of the picture. You see the, the Kremlin behind them, but one of the people is, is gone. China does the same thing in the digital age. You say, Peter, in your, in your book, um, Bill Gates at Microsoft actually sided with such censorship. Uh, quote, Gates actually sided with Beijing. He argued companies need to follow local laws. His position even prompted the Chinese embassy to run an approving story entitled, Bill Gates Bats for China. It's frightening, given the technology <laughs> yeah, yeah. that Bill Gates has at its hand. Well, that's right. The technology has it as hand. Microsoft, of course, is selling a lot of products in China, which makes them and shareholders a lot of money. But you have to ask yourself, at what price? Uh, because Bill Gates not only legitimizes the regime, he makes these statements, which, by the way, get aired on Chinese national television. So this is a way the regime itself enhances its position. But at the same time, Bill Gates, he's invested in companies. There's a, a company called BYD, which stands for Build Your Dreams, which is an ironic name for a company because what BYD does is build guidance systems for the um, missile systems uh, that China is developing. Those missile systems pointed at us. Well, Bill Gates is actually a shareholder in that company. He's also an advisor to the Chinese Academy of Engineering, which even though it sounds like sort of a, a tech uh, institution. It's actually run by the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, the point is, is that they perform lots of services for this regime. They would say that they're not doing anything to help the Chinese government. They're merely engaging in commerce. But the fact of the matter is, is they are helping this regime. They're profiting from it. And Beijing is benefiting enormously. I didn't devote enough time to this question. It's very, very important, though. Is faith allowed to be practiced in China. I mean, that is at the root of, of the American Constitution. It is fundamental, uh, the ability to worship God. It certainly leads to natural law, freedom. Those robots in China are actually cautioning people to resist their desire for freedom. That's part of yeah. the taped message they're yeah. issuing. Your thoughts on faith in China yeah, before I mean, we leave? I mean, I mean, resist life, they might as well say. I mean, when you, when you think about it, Doug, that's a great question. Um, imagine that a faithful leader, a believing leader in this country uh, of any faith, but uh, particularly a Christian uh, political leader, uh, decided to make, take a stance on... Uh, what he considered biblically um, unacceptable practices. Uh, let's imagine that that person's name was Ron DeSantis. Let's imagine that he signs a bill saying 
that young children should not be exposed to adventurous ideas, let's put it that way, about sexual activities. He would be excoriated by many of the same companies that, uh, in fact, are quite willing to do business. Disney, for example, has decided to go to war with the state of Florida and with Ron DeSantis over this very issue. Disney has no, no sense of obligation at all to speak out about what happens in China. I mean, are you kidding me? There are secret silent churches in China. You actually have to do your worship service in silence because of a knock on the door. Who owns a lot of stock in Disney? What country? Uh, China does. Yeah, there we go. Peter Schweitzer, Peter Boyer, fascinating, fascinating discussion. We would love to have you back. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Doug. Hi, I'm Belinda Lane, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment if you feel inclined and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.